Hi everyone, I know you've been waiting for this tutorial. Uh, sorry for it taking so long. This tutorial is basically going to take you through uh, how I would go about modeling up the Ventolin inhaler. I know we did a quick demo on this in class, but this should help to uh, just reinforce some of those concepts. So what I've done first of all, I've actually taken some photos of the Ventolin inhaler. And you can see that there. Now, the first thing that we really need to, to look at modeling is this cross section here. So you can kind of see that cross section there. And from that, I basically came up with some dimensions, some rough dimensions that I can work with. So I, I needed to find out what this dimension was across here and the dimension across here, as well as uh, a dimension across there. And these rough dimensions or, or construction lines, if you like, just give you a basis as to how to start modeling this object. Now, of course, your inhaler that you design uh, will no doubt be different to this, but uh, this just gives you a, an insight into how you know you can go about modeling something like that. So, as I said, I took some measurements off that. So I'm going to dive straight into Rhino to kind of give you an update as to uh, what I've done here. So you can kind of see my cross section across here. Now, these lines here, they're simply um, construction lines that I measured out. So I've got, uh, I think I measured this one to be something like 28 millimeters, and that one in total represents 29 millimeters. And I think this is four millimeters away there. Anyway, how do I get those curves in? So let's go with, we'll do a curve, and I think I'll use the second one here arc, start, end, point on arc. And I've made sure that I've got my O snap on. And I'm snapping to the end there, the end there, and then you will see it will also snap to the end there. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is simply to do another arc. So this time I, th I think I might go with a start end direction. And I'm going to go from there to about there and then just pull that out. A tad. That looks okay. And then I think I'll simply go with a polyline and do a straight line from there to there. Hit enter to finish. Now that I've got that, I can simply select both of those using my multiple selection tool, i.e. holding the shift button down. And then in the command line, I'm just gonna type mirror and mirror that straight through to there. Wonderful, all right, now I can actually ditch these construction elements. that one also. All right, now if I jump back to my image here, you can actually see that there is a, you know, it kind of rounds through, there's a bit of a fillet in here, and there's certainly a fillet up here. So I'm gonna to try to emulate something like that in Rhino. So I go back. So the fillet that I'm talking about, like you need to soften this off in here between there and there, as well as putting a round between here and here. In fact, I might do the round between these two first. So I'm going to go to fillet curves and I think I might go with a, uh, a radius of two and then you basically just select there and there. Yep, that looks okay and I'll do the same on the other side. Alright, so now I want to put a fillet in between these two elements or these two pieces of geometry and let's do that again. This time I might put in a bigger fillet here just to um, see what happens. I've put in five there, click, click. See, it's, it's hardly noticeable. In fact, I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna put in a, a much bigger fillet, maybe 10, see if there's any difference. Again, very, very hard to, hard to notice that. I'll try again, let's go with something much bigger, maybe 30, this probably won't work, but we'll see, click, click, okay, yeah, you got, so if I undo that, so you can kind of see from there to there, and then if I do a fillet with a radius of 30, click, click, yeah, you can see it just blends that, smooths that through, and I'll do the same on the other side, there, and there, so that's a nice, cross section that I have. Now what I need to do is I need to join all of that together. 
So I'll use the puzzle piece to join it. A presto. And then my next move is to make that into a surface. So if we think of this as being a curve, I'm going to make that into a surface. So I just go surface from planar curves. And that's done. And I don't really need that curve anymore, so I can delete it. Now I've got that. I can go back to my four viewports. And I'd like to simply extrude this longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to extrude this about 100 millimeters. So I'm just going to type in 100. So you can see it's much longer than it needs to be. Now what I actually have here is I've got the the, uh, the original surface that I've just extruded, so I can actually delete that. Done. And then if I just show you all what I've got so far, in fact, let's just shade that. So that's pretty much what we've got to start with. Okay, so you might want to have a crack at doing that before we move on to the next part.